You know, by watching this video, you and I have entered into an arrangement. If any of these predictions are correct, you owe me a pizza. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate represents the culmination of a 25-year-old franchise. With over 80 playable characters and over 100 distinct stages, it is hard to imagine where the franchise can go from here. Famed director of the series, Masahiro Sakurai, even said himself, I feel we truly succeeded in making people happy with this game, but now that Smash Brothers has grown to be monstrous in size, I'd say it's difficult to imagine an increase of this magnitude happening again. Every time, we managed to make a game that I had previously thought impossible, so I can't say for certain there won't be another, but I do think it would be difficult to push it any further than we have. Well, today, I hope you will catch my drift as we imagine the impossible, as we theorize what a sequel to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate could look like. I have five major ideas, but before we get to those, I think we need to answer a key question. We need to know what is a Super Smash Brothers game? And to answer that question, I have three key rules that we will follow. One, it functions as a hybrid between platforming and fighting games. Two, it's a crossover. And three, it's simple. What I'm trying to do with these three rules is identify the essence of Smash Brothers. First, the hybrid nature of it. It's about having that balance and that synergy between platforming, jumping around, distance, spacing, and fighting game mechanics. With the crossover stuff, you want that inherent multiversal appeal. What if Link fought Pikachu? That kind of thing. More than just like an aesthetic crossover like Fortnite, I do think that the crossover here is more meaningful and characters especially are meant to feel like an echo of who they are and how they play in their source material. And the simplicity aspect. I've always thought that the real beauty and the genius of Smash was in how readable its characters and moves are. You know when something hits, when it misses. It's easy to follow and understand. Far easier than most fighting games. Further, it is simple to execute. Single button special moves are a godsend for anyone that's bounced off quarter circle movements and the low execution barrier of difficulty has always made for a great entryway to anyone trying to understand Smash's exceptionally high skill ceiling. With these three rules in mind, let's hit my five possible sequels for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. One, Super Smash Bros. Revolution. Picture this, Mario runs on to Battlefield. He looks around, no enemies. He notices the camera. He punches it. The perspective shifts. It is a 3D game. We are behind Mario as he discovers other characters hiding behind rocks. Smashing ensues. I think the way that you move on from the ultimate iteration of Smash Brothers is by flipping the script. Nintendo franchises have been exploring the 3D space more and more. So if Smash Brothers is a crossover reflective of Nintendo's games, shouldn't Smash follow suit? The game could play like Power Stone, operating within 3D environments while giving every player the same screen of view. This would pull on the platforming legacy of games like Super Mario 3D World, giving players all new stages with tons of 3D platforming potential while still maintaining the basic rules of Smash and the goal of knocking enemies out of the arena. Alternatively, the game could play more like Divine Knockout. Here the camera is positioned behind each player and environments can be much larger. If you're unfamiliar with this game, I super recommend checking it out as it's a really unique twist on the Smash formula and one idea Smash could take if it were to go the 3D route is having special moves be hotkeys rather than directional inputs. Now, I like the idea of a 3D Smash because I think you keep the fundamentals and Smash Ultimate continues to exist as the ultimate version of that kind of Smash game, but this would make the value proposition very clear. This would definitely be a new game. And further, again, I think so many Nintendo franchises are 3D now that this would really capture characters and stages in a way that we currently cannot. I would love to pull off a spin jump as Mario or aim down sights as an inkling. There's a part of me too that wants a 3D Smash game just to have the experience of successfully hiding from an opponent or jumping out from behind something. And 
stages could really feel like you were in the world of that game rather than just being a snapshot of their essence. It would really be so cool, I think. Plus, it gives you a pretty good excuse to retool all the content so you can start small and build and add on over time with each new fighter being a drastically new experience because they are in 3D now. I call this game Super Smash Bros. Revolution, and it's probably not going to happen. For my second possible sequel, let's call it Super Smash Bros. Worlds. When constructing this list, I was struck by how Sakurai would, when introducing a new franchise coming to Smash, almost always position it like a big crossover between the brands. It was always Smash, X, whatever. And I want to take this idea a step further and really lean into the crossover elements. Super Smash Bros. Worlds trades the scope of Smash Ultimate's content offerings for depth. I envisioned the game touting a single player campaign appropriately called Smash Worlds, which is updated over time with new content. I'm imagining it almost like an RPG. You go into the Pokemon world and this drops you into Kanto. Maybe you run a favor for Professor Oak or take on the Elite Four. And of course, you gotta go defeat Mewtwo at the end as a boss fight. This whole setup could be applied to any world and consists of any number of quests, boss fights, or even mini games. It's an evolution that I think would combine Melee's adventure mode, the subspace emissary, and the flexibility of spirit battles into one cohesive thing. Plus, if you stick to Smash Ultimate's massive roster, it gives you a content pipeline that isn't solely reliant on adding new characters in that you go and fully explore Smash Worlds. Potential sequel three, Super Smash Bros. Generations. So since adding new characters and stages to Smash Brothers feels like a Herculean task, what if we added the same characters instead? The same, but different, but the same, but the, but different, but all, but generations should lead into the part of Smash that embraces Nintendo's history. I want the main draw here to be that you have like Nintendo 64 Mario fighting Super Mario Sunshine Mario fighting Odyssey Mario fighting Paper Mario. Like, let's represent the history of these characters completely. This will allow movesets to be the same but different and refresh a lot of veterans in fan-pleasing ways. You get the version of the character that you are attached to in the art style you are sentimental about. And this game could function largely the same as Ultimate, but with this element of it being the star. It reminds me a lot of like, okay, Dragon Ball games that give you a million versions of Goku, you know, it kind of lets you go back to your heavy hitters in a way that rewards your most enduring characters. You know what I'm saying? Like movie Mario, big Pikachu, come on. Our fourth sequel, Super Smash Brothers Re boot. This is probably not the most exciting option, but I think we have to imagine a version of Smash that is more typical fighting game sequel. You pare back the roster and other content, but instead focus on new visuals, features, and mechanics to sell the newness of it. This game would simply be a new Smash Brothers that plays a lot like Ultimate, but features some new modes and gimmicks that make it unique. I think you could see an emphasis on online features and advanced mechanics here. Maybe make a big deal about improved netcode and add in something for high level players like the slime meter in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, a little refresh. This is a Street Fighter 5 to Street Fighter 6 kind of situation and is wholly dependent on what the team decides to make a priority and focus on beyond just the scope of Ultimate. And finally, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Err. Picture this. The everyone is here trailer, and then the word again. Th this, this just feels so likely. I guess what I'm imagining, right? What I'm imagining is Smash Ultimate with all of the DLC bundled together on one cartridge, and then you get like some dumb additional content like me costumes, and then they do like the fighter's pass for this thing, and they just keep the Smash train going. Uh, I think that there's a way to sell this that is more interesting or more exciting, but I think ultimately my next, my stance is that if I pick up the next Smash Brothers game and I'm looking at the character select screen, and I pick Incineroar, and Incineroar plays the exact same way that he played in Ultimate, that, that that's, that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be a tough sell. 
Like sure, Smash Ultimate R could differentiate itself by like adding some of the features that I talked about for the reboot game, and it would make it clear that it's like incompatible with the prior version of Smash Ultimate, because I'm sure that's something that Nintendo would be worried about. But I think I wanted to end on the possibility of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate R, just to illustrate how difficult it is to move on from something when you openly call it the ultimate version of that thing, especially when Super Smash Brothers Ultimate does live up to the name. Oh man, they're gonna do it, aren't they? Well, anyways, these were my five possible sequels to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I hope you catch my drift and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hey, hello, hi, this is a post credits thing uh, that I typically do at the end of every episode. So thank you so much for sticking around past that little uh, and credits roll thing. So right now you're going to see the names scrolling by me and those are the people that are kind enough to support me on Patreon, which is a really cool thing that I'm doing and part of my schedule for this is that I do eight episodes, eight weeks in a row of Catch My Drift and then I give myself three weeks off. And in those three weeks, I'll make one video, maybe another, I'm not really sure yet. And it'll be unrelated to Catch My Drift before we come back for another eight episodes of season two. So I just wanted to let everybody know that there's gonna be a little bit of a break in case you haven't been paying attention to how things work on the Patreon page. So I'm gonna be gone for three weeks, but you will still see me uh, streaming. We're still playing Pokemon Heart Gold, having the absolute best time. We're about to wrap it up too. We're on the Elite Four, so I think I'm gonna finish that up. Maybe we'll stream some multiplayer games soon that I can play with all of you. And then um, the last thing is, is that there's going to be another video that I do have planned. I'm not gonna reveal anything about it yet, but you'll see at least that on the channel too over the course of the next three weeks. There will be other things. You'll see me around, but Catch My Drift Season 2 will start in three weeks. This has been so fun for me. This is my first time, really ever having like my own YouTube channel and really doing this. And I've just, I, I, I've been having a freaking blast. Like actually, you know what I mean? So uh, thank you everybody for watching my videos. And uh, if you haven't already, I highly encourage you to come by our Pokemon Heart Gold stream. So jolly, peace and love, be well. I'll see you next time, bye.